Hi, my name is Matt and welcome back to Mix Series. In the last video, we talked about digital consoles and what makes them so useful in live audio. Today, we're going to be diving into patching and setting preamp levels on your console. Now, since we're using a virtual playback, there are some things that are going to be different in our setup that won't look exactly the same way they would look live. I'll cover that in just a minute, but first let's talk about routing. If you haven't seen the first video in the series, Digital Consoles 101, I highly recommend you go back and watch that video before watching this one. In that video, I talk about the flexibility of digital consoles and how patching works in the digital domain. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. The X32 handles patching in a really silly way, and uh, it's pretty different from most consoles. So if you find yourself getting a little bit confused, it's okay. It's the console's fault, not yours. Either way, let's dive in and get ourselves patched for a virtual sound check. If you aren't aware of what patching is, let me explain quickly. Patching is the act of plugging in an analog source into an input on the console or remote stage box and setting that input as the source for a channel on the console. If you're starting completely from scratch on an X32, each input on the back of the console will be patched to each channel in a one-to-one -one configuration. This just means that input one goes to channel one input two goes to channel two, and so on. Many digital consoles actually don't come pre-patched like this, so it's a really important thing to have a good understanding of how your console handles patching. Now let's jump into the X32 patch and I will do my best to explain what's happening. Since the 4.0 update, there are now two different ways to set up your patch on the X32. First, I'll show you the way that the X32 was originally designed to be used, and then I'll show you the way that I would recommend setting up your patch now. While most consoles allow you to patch directly from a physical input to a channel, the X32 adds one more layer of patching. Instead of patching directly from a physical input to a channel, we have to tell the console where to source each of its 32 inputs that can be assigned. Before the 4.0 update, there was only one way to do this, and you had to select these groups of eight physical inputs from the various sources that you might need. For example, if you're using a stage box, you would set these inputs to be patched from the physical inputs on the stage box. You may already see where this could create a problem, but if not, let me explain. Imagine for a moment that you have a full band on stage with four wireless vocal mics. The band is all patched through a remote stage box and the four wireless mics are patched directly into the console. This band needs 28 of the inputs on the stage and the four vocal mics make 32 inputs total. No problem, right? The X32 is a 32-channel console. This would be perfect. Well, not exactly. Since the band needs 28 inputs from the stage box, and we can only patch the physical I.O. in blocks of 8 inputs, I have to either use 24 inputs from the stage or 32. But if I set all 32 to come from the stage, I can't use the physical inputs on my console at all. And if I set it to only use 24 inputs from the stage, and I set the last 8 to come from the console inputs, I'm wasting four input channels, or I'd have to run four of the stage inputs all the way to the console. Behringer recognized that this was a totally insane way to do this when they released the 4.0 update, and since then, we can use what are called user ins. If you scroll all the way to the last tab in the routing page, you'll see the user inputs. This is how I set up my X32. Instead of messing with the blocks of eight, I'll set the four blocks of eight to all be my user inputs. Then I'll do all of my patching in the user inputs page. This allows you to change each input to be sourced from wherever you need it to be. Now I try to keep this part of the patch as one-to-one -one as possible, just so I don't confuse myself when I start patching the inputs to the channels, but you can set it up however you need to for your setup. Once we have our user inputs all patched to the physical IO we're using, we can start patching each channel accordingly. We can select the channel we want to patch and press view on its preamp or input section. Now we can turn this knob to select the input we would like to connect to the channel. Once it's selected, congratulations, you've patched a physical input to a channel on the console. You can now set your preamp level and begin processing the audio. For our purposes today, I'm going to be using the USB card on the console to play back 32 channels of audio through the console. Now, I've already configured my outputs on my computer to match the inputs I need on the console, so I'm going to set my physical input patch to the card inputs. 
This will allow me to play the 32 channels of dry, unprocessed audio through the console as if we had a live band on stage. This is what's called a virtual sound check, and it's an incredibly useful tool that you can use for dialing in your mix without having to have the band on stage for hours. You can simply play back a recording from a rehearsal or service through your computer. This allows you to get really detailed and specific with your mix. Now let's talk about preamps or gain level coming into the console. When you plug an XLR into the console or stage box, you are plugging into an analog preamp that will boost your mic level signal up to line level. Now every source is going to require different levels of amplification depending on the hardware or mic used to capture the source. It even matters how loud your vocalists sing on their microphones or how hard your drummer plays. We can change the level of preamp gain by selecting the channel and turning the gain knob up or down. There are lots of different schools of thought when it comes to preamp gain levels. The old school method was to run the preamp as hot as possible, but this isn't really necessary with most modern preamps and can actually make your life a little bit difficult when it comes time to set your dynamics processing. In my opinion, the most consistent way to set your preamp gains is by turning the gain knob up or down until the source is sitting just above the middle of the meter. On the X32, I try to aim for about minus 12 on all of my sources. It's important to remember that music is dynamic, meaning the sources are going to hit the preamps hotter in bigger moments of a song and softer in lower moments of the songs. This is totally fine and it's to be expected. I usually try to get my preamp gain set in the loudest moment of the first song of a rehearsal. It's smart to set your gain levels when the band is playing big to avoid a scenario where you might have set the gain for a source you thought was quieter, but then they begin to clip or overload the preamp when they start to play big. Another important thing to note is that you should be able to set your gain levels coming into the console without even really hearing the source. A common mistake I see is that audio engineers will set their gain levels based on the level they want to achieve in the room but it isn't really time to consider the level coming from your loudspeakers yet. So if it helps, just go ahead and turn them way down or even turn them completely off when setting your preamp gain. If your mix is too loud once you have you set your preamp levels and created your mix, just turn your PA down. I really can't stress enough how important it is to get your preamp levels right. So many times I see guys fighting to get a good mix and it's because their preamp levels are all over the place. If you take the time to get these set, you might just be surprised at how easily your mix will come together. The level your source is coming into the console will also play a huge role in how hard you're hitting your compressors. I mentioned that earlier. So if you're using the same template every week, I would say that the most important thing you can probably do in rehearsal is to get your preamp gain set correctly. In the next video, we're going to be jumping into a basic overview of channel processing. So don't go anywhere.